in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have waited and longed for, hoped and prepared for Christ to come again. To come into our homes and into our hearts, to dwell within our families and our friendships, to be present on our streets and to be welcome in our workplaces, bringing new life and light to our world. And so we pray, Christ is coming. Among the poor, among the proud, among the persecuted, among the privileged, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. In our homes and in our schools, in our feasting places and in our law courts, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. With a gentle touch and a challenging word, with a burning vision and a tender love, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. That we may believe that the kingdom has come, that we may believe that the powerful might know their place and the humble might know their power, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. Among us and beyond us, in this place and in every place, in this time for eternity, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a saviour is given. The child be Christ our King, who calls us to create the dwelling peace of God's peace and justice. And so we pray, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. The angels remember, I think we came into being from a lie and a word spoken by God. Then we became bearers of the truth, carried here and there throughout all remember time. It has been a good life carrying the message of the Holy One. You will find us throughout the old history, visiting Abraham and Sarah, struggling with Jacob, saving Daniel from the lion, guiding Elijah, and on many other occasions. Gabriel was in the new history right from the beginning. He met Zachariah burning incense at the altar of God in the temple. When I told him he was to have a son, he found it difficult to believe, and so he remained speechless until the child was named John. I think Elizabeth handled the whole thing with much more grace. She wanted to know how she could have a child when they had yet to sleep together. But when I explained about the Holy Spirit, though still concerned, she said yes to God.
I still remember her reply. It was so full of faith. Be it done according to your holy word. It was easy to warn to her and to be worried for her. It was harder for Joseph when she told him she was expecting a child. He thought Mary had let him down. He wanted to do the decent thing and the betrothal quietly so that Mary's reputation wouldn't be harmed. I had to step in again to tell him to trust his instincts and his love for Mary. This child was, after all, the son of God. I heard that Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth when they were both pregnant. That must have been some encounter with Jesus and John in the same place before they were born. Don't get ahead of yourself. The meeting was probably about Mary and Joseph supporting one another in difficult circumstances. Zachariah unable to talk and Joseph uncertain about what was happening. I can see Mary and Elizabeth having plenty to talk over. There were also other routes to the new history. Do you remember the, the new star that had been birthed in the night sky? The star could be seen everywhere, and wise people about the globe began to wonder what was going on. Bags were packed in distant countries and journeys have begun in Africa and Asia and many places in between. I don't remember how many people set out that night, but only three persevered through the top and uncertain times. Jerusalem, Herod held power tightly to himself, ever mindful of threats to his kingship. Shepherds were minding their flocks as they did, keeping them from harm.
Joseph and Mary married, but without too much fuss, which caused rumours, but they lived quietly learning how to prepare for the child. The stars still shone in the east. And the Magi still made pilgrimage towards Judea. Then the Emperor Augustus also had a hand in events proclaiming the census. Everyone had to travel to their hometown to register. Joseph must have grown at the fall of the journey. How difficult it would be for Mary, who was large with child. How on earth will she keep all of them safe? Food and clothing were packed and distances were calculated. If they were fortunate, they would be in Bethlehem in good time before the baby was born. But how could Mary travel so far? In Jerusalem, rumors began to abound about exotic visitors from the east. Herod's spies sent messages back and forth until they had snared the Magi with stories on how the answers were to be found in Herod's court. The Magi were brought before the king. The shepherds took watch, taking it in turn to sleep in the midst of the sheepfold, to stop wolves and thieves from disturbing the flock. Someone lent Joseph a beast of burden as they had no cart. Mary had made provision to be on the road for a week or so, sleeping out under the stars. It was time to go, in fact it was already getting late. <laughs> The wise people came to Herod and asked him, Where is he to be born king of Jews? For we have seen his star, and now we have come to worship him. Herod's men asked the scribes and the teachers of law and were told that the scripture taught that the child, the Messiah, would be born in Bethlehem. For you, Bethlehem is by or by no means, for the least of the towns of Judea. For out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people of Israel. So Herod sent the wise people to Bethlehem in search for the child of God. And, when, and Herod instructed them that when they had found the child, they should return back to Jerusalem so that he, Herod, could also go and worship the child. They made themselves once again following the star to Bethlehem. Been searching for something, something that's bigger than us to believe in. Who knew a star was so close it could touch us? Light up our hearts, lead the way through the dark. I've been waiting all my life to feel this feeling that I feel right now. Open up your eyes and see the world is right now. Can you see? Tell me, can you see the star? It's sure for you and me. It lights the way from where we are. At the same time, Joseph was becoming increasingly worried that Mary would have to give birth by the roadside. He and Mary simply could not move as fast as the other travelers. 
people were kind. They stopped to talk. The woman offered advice and words of encouragement to Mary, but then they moved on. No one wanted to spend more time in the wild than was necessary. In the end, Joseph and Mary traveled day and night, taking short rests, unaware of the light that accompanied them. When they arrived, Bethlehem was in chaos. People and animals moving about, everywhere full to the brim. No room, no bed, nowhere to lay a tired body. Move on. Shepherds were watching others and sleeping. The sheep were huddled and safely kept. My die already travel weary, left Jerusalem, beginning to doubt the wisdom of the journey, and a little scared of Herod's orders to return, and we angels were practicing our glories and alleluias. Please, can anyone help me? Our baby is due. My wife can't have her child in the street like the animals. Well done, sisters, anywhere, please, a small corner, anywhere. The cattle stall is dry and warm and will keep the chill of you all. Come, come with, come with me. You say you came all the way from Nazareth with your wife in her condition. What are you thinking of? Ah, the senses, of course. But all the same, what were you thinking of? Come and make a place in the straw to lie down. Let me see if I can find the midwife. Try and eat something. You will need all the strength in the hours ahead. Waters poured forth and brought with them the hours of labor and pain. The child came forth, birthed and bloody from Mary's body. Clean and wrapped in cloth, Mary held her child close as she fed the Son of God. Joseph named the baby Jesus, as Gabriel had told them, a name that means God brings salvation. For a little while, the family in the cattle shed rested quietly. The shepherds, who had been about their work, were sleeping in their turn, were awoken to a joyous song.
find a newborn king, wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. They readily agreed to go and worship their holy baby, who would save God's people. and the starlight to the stable and then they saw for themselves all that we had told them and they worshipped the child and gave food and blankets to keep Mary and Joseph warm and that was that for a while but I came to Joseph night after night in his dreams to warn him about Herod's intentions towards the boy when days later the Magi turned up with gifts to welcome the child it was both miraculous and frightening for they had been under Herod's court I wore them as did Joseph to return home by another path. And the next day, Joseph and Mary packed up and took the child to Egypt and to safety. Do you remember their gifts? The gold, frankincense and myrrh? Their meaning stayed with me these many years since. The gold came in handy over the years spent in Egypt as refugees. The frankincense pointed to the holiness of the child that would bring people to, closer to God once more. And the myrrh, I remember well the myrrh, as a sign of all that was to come into a life that would know suffering. The response to the child of God is, hear our prayer. As we remember Mary and Joseph's journey, we pray for all the refugees forced to flee their homes and seek safety in new country. May they be welcomed, child of God. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers. As we remember the inns of four, we pray for those without a safe place to sleep and those without the help they need. Grant them friends to support them and speak up for them whenever they are unable to do so, child of God. Hear our prayers. As we remember the joy of the shepherds and the angels, we pray for those who are in need of the message of hope. Help us to protect our amazing planet and to work to slow the effects of climate change. Child of God. Hear our prayers. As we remember your birth in a stable, we pray for those shining light into darkness. We ask your blessings for volunteers who help their communities and all those who share, campaign and pray. Child of God. As we remember the family you were born into, we pray for our own families. Help us to embrace the true meaning of your birth, that God loves us and has become human to show that love to us. Child of God. Hear our prayers. God of new life and, and of starlight, may we keep the message of your angels ever before us. Help us to recognize Christ in the people we meet. Give you glory in all that we do and seek peace and justice on earth for all. Amen. We give you thanks, God of all life, for the courage of your holy child and for the courage of Mary and Joseph who welcomed in him into the world. May we learn what it means to be true disciples of Jesus and seek to live as he taught us. God of all that is good, bless us and keep us. May the light of Christ shine upon us and your spirit of wisdom. Guide us this day and always. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.